Unbelievable. So now I just have to route this in a way that is neat and orderly. All right, good morning everyone. It is about 20 minutes after the last video. My lens is really dirty. I need to wipe that off. All right, so we are back in the shop, finally. It's a beautiful day outside. It's already in the 50s. It's gonna get into the mid 60s today. It's, uh, what is today, February 8th? We've got some projects to work on. We've got some parts here that I ordered. We've got some harnesses from Ag Express, harness from Climate Field View. Uh, this is just some paint for the mold boards on this plow, but I've got a lot of work I need to get done and I'm taking advantage of this weather to do it. So let's get started. First thing I need to do is grab the battery charger for this old 1206. I'm sure the battery's dead, charger's in the other shed. Got to get this thing out of here and pull the 8400 in. That is what these harnesses are for. I'll explain that when I get to it, but I want to get this started so I can raise the plow up. This is, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's soft black paint that you put on like tillage stuff. You spray it on mold boards or chisel plow points or discs or whatever. So I'm gonna spray these mold boards down really fast, that way they don't rust. Um, they're already kind of starting to rust a little bit, but not a big deal. We don't use this plow very often, and if we let it sit, these mold boards will get really rusty and then we'll just have a hard time using it next time we actually do need to use it. So we're gonna do that real quick. Thing's heavy. Okay, I'm gonna let this charge a bit and we're gonna go over to the other shed. I can't remember if the 8400 is buried in there. I think we gotta get the field cultivator out. Dad's out dragging roads for the township with the 7210 and the road drag, so. I guess I should move my truck too. Well, I guess we should take a look in this shed and see how much stuff I have to move. Oh, perfect. Everything's in the way. There, now you can see a little better. So the tractor I want is that guy right there. Field cultivators here, four wheelers there. Can I, is there any way I can sneak this out of here? It's, it's not looking good. Yeah, I can't even move forward, or as, otherwise I will hit the auger on the cart. Yeah, she's packed in here tight. I guess I'll have to hook up the field cultivator. That's all right, it needs to be hooked up anyway. Let's see if this guy will start. I guess I should check the oil. I'm sure it's fine. Oh yeah, we're good. I'm also gonna need that screen. Perfect. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is just hook up the field cultivator and pull it forward just enough that I can sneak that tractor around. That way this tractor can stay in the shed. So we're two for two on tractor starting. See if the 8430 will start. Check the oil real quick. Yep. Oh, the seat is on the floor.
Sweet. Oh, let me sneak right past you. Eighty four hundred is in the shop. I guess I could explain what we got going on. So I ordered these harnesses. Uh, these are some auto steer guidance harnesses and whatnot for the 8400. We already have a harness in here, but the harness we have is the basic guidance harness. Uh, obviously this 1995 tractor wasn't originally equipped with guidance, so we had to do aftermarket. Um, it has an Ag Express harness in there, but basically all it's capable of doing is pulling GPS off the receiver and steering the ATU steering wheel. So what I've got is a, uh, what do you call it, ISO bus harness. And what this will allow me to do is guidance for one, like we've been doing, but it'll also allow me to plug into our new air seeder, which runs off of Seedstar. That's what you use to monitor it. Uh, the monitor will show up right on the display in the tractor. So it doesn't have its own separate monitor. Uh, the only way I could make it work is to replace the whole harness, which kind of stinks, but it will make this tractor a uh, little more, what do you want to say, versatile. If we ever get different planners or whatever, it'll be capable of running some of that newer equipment. And I also got this uh, field view harness. This will plug into here somehow, and it will allow me to run climate field view. Also got this. This guy has to plug into here. Uh, this is a case drain. The blower on that uh, air seeder has this flat face fitting, so I gotta pop that off, pop that on here, and I should be able to hook that right into there for the case drain, but I'm gonna save that. I gotta get working on this harness. So I already started tearing this harness apart. Oh, that is way loose. It should be relatively plug and play. Uh, I might need the directions a little bit to help me, but basically you, you plug it into this guy, you plug it into the receiver, and you plug it into your display, which is in the other tractor right now. I gotta get that out. Gotta pop this bolt out. For some reason, I ran this harness around there. Now I can put this back in, maybe. All right, now we got some stuff that goes underneath the floor. Well, it did go underneath the floor. I pulled it up. Um, okay, so this guy right here is my resume switch, and it plugs into that. Okay. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Come on. Nope. Whoa. So this part of the harness I have to save. So I'm just gonna set that on the seat for now. Um, let's see. So I should have a cable going out the back of the tractor that goes to a magnetic dealio thing for coverage recording. And there should be another one that goes up to the front of the tractor for GPS signal, which is this one. So I'm gonna pop that off the top of the cab. Never mind, it did it for me. And see if we can get this out from behind the seat. When you start adding stuff to these old tractors, it can kind of become a nightmare because nothing's integrated and you just gotta run the wires wherever you can. So it's kind of a disaster. And I'll just put it in a nice neat pile in this corner. Now this one. Actually, I think I should unplug this one in the cab because I'm still gonna need this. Actually, you know what? I might not need this anymore for coverage since I'm going to a CAN bus system, but I might. So I'm gonna save it, pop it off here. Try to do it with one hand. There we go. And you can stay for now. There's that. All right, so we have no instructions. That's great. 30991. And this goes out the back of the tractor. And this is where you'll plug the air seeder into. 
And then this must be the cab harness. All right. I'm gonna have to think a minute on how to do this. So I'll be back to you guys in a minute. Okay, so I've narrowed it down to this is my cab harness. This one goes up to the receiver. And this one jumps off and goes to the ATU, which is the steering wheel. And then I got my climate one. I'll worry about that later. I'm gonna start with this guy. All right, I'll start on the easy end. I guess you guys probably can't see much because you're pointing at the sun. I'll move you over here. Magnet is strong. There. So I know this one goes out the back of the window for sure. So we'll start with that. And we'll just kind of throw it out for now. And we'll tidy it up later. Now this stuff, I'm not exactly sure what it does. Okay, this is implement lift. So that one harness I saved with the uh, mercury switch on it plugs into here. Um, this one, thankfully everyone, everything is kind of labeled. So we got power here and we got display hookup here. So now I just have to route this in a way that is neat and orderly, which is the challenge. And already this stuff's in my way. You stay over here for now. And also, you stay over here for now. Underneath. And then stay over here. Alright, so I've got this part of the harness run underneath the floor mat. I'm just going to leave that there for now. I got my power run. I always want to just make it look as neat as possible, but then when it comes down to it, it's just too much work and then it, it ends up just kind of getting thrown in here. But I'll try and get everything kind of set in where I want it and then try and tidy it up a little bit later. I just want to get everything hooked up and make sure I know where everything goes and then we'll worry about how it looks. Next, I'm going to work on this ATU harness. It should be... Never mind, that doesn't plug in there. Where does that plug into? Huh. All right, I'm already confused. Oh, wait a minute. We got stuff back here. Okay, so there's a connector there. I already know what that is. This guy should plug into that. What's this look like? Well, that's a three pin. And that is not a three pin. All right, I'm confused. Well, I know for a fact that this plugs in here. So I'm going to plug that in for now, and then I'm just going to set this down here, and we'll figure that out later. Next, receiver harness. So this goes up to the front of the tractor on top of the cab. We'll kind of work from there back. That is a lot longer than it looked. Get back over here where I can grab you easily. There. Now we'll go back in the tractor. Uh, once I get everything set, we used to have some sticky clip things that held this down. I really should run it through the cab, but probably not today. Well, maybe we'll do that down the road. Okay, so I've got everything kind of converging down here in the same spot, and it looks like I've got all the connectors that I need. So, I guess I'll just start plugging them in. I really should find some instructions online so I don't fry something. But I don't think I'm going to. I'm pretty sure all these connectors will only plug in where they're supposed to be plugged in. So I should be okay. So I went and got the screen out of the other tractor. I think that will kind of help me figure out what needs to be plugged in where. This is going to be a pain. I might have to take this apart. Oh boy. Get in there. Okay. There's that one. So I'll leave that loose for now so I can move it out of the way. Oh. Okay. I 
know this one goes into the back of the receiver. So probably what I'll do is last time I had a whole bunch of extra harness. So I just kind of looped it around the bracket here. And then I'll plug this into the back. And I'll probably do the same with these. Oh, that was dumb. I probably should have put that on and then put the receiver on, but I'll figure it out. I pulled some extra slack on this one. We'll get that in the cab more and get all this hooked up. Okay, I've got everything hooked up. The only problem is I'm pretty sure this four pin, man, I wish this camera was better in the dark, but I'm pretty sure this four pin is my resume switch, which activates the auto steer. That is this switch right here on the armrest. And the plug-in I have for that is, what is that, nine pin? So, I'm pretty sure this isn't an Ag Express switch, so I might have to order one of those, so it'll plug into that. And I've got some extra connectors here. I'm going to have to pull up a wiring diagram and see what those are for, but I'm going to turn the key on and see what we've got here. Screen lights up. That's good. We'll let that load and see what we've got. All right, GPS communication problem. GPS signal has been lost. Um, okay, I think I need to plug something else in. Okay, so it's saying that my GPS receiver is not plugged in to the display. I'll look into that. I'm gonna have to call Ag Express, make sure everything's plugged in, because I've got some extra connections down there that I'm not sh really sure what they're for. And I'm gonna have to get a resume switch. So I think that's about all I can do for now. I'm not going to tidy up any of these wires just yet because I'm not sure how that resume switch and everything is going to run. I'll probably run to the back of the tractor and mount that connector back there somehow. And that's probably going to be about it for this tractor for today. Because i got to run home, check on mama and the baby, and have some lunch. So they sent this little plate that this plug goes into. I'm assuming it goes into. Then I'll have to drill a hole and mount it up here somewhere. That is what we'll plug the air seeder into. And then I also have to change that, uh, what do you call it, case drain fitting yet. So let's get to it. So I think if I just unscrew this nut, slide it back, I can slip this on. Yeah, just like that. Or do I want that goofy washer? No, that'll be fine. So then that'll mount up there like that somehow. I'll probably drill my hole first. Well, this big wrist breaker is the only drill I've got. But this is just aluminum, so I should survive. I guess I should figure out where I want to drill first. Harbor Freight drill bits probably aren't the best, but they sure are cheap. Unbelievable. All right, we're going to find some different drill bits real quick. Is this one garbage? Let's see if this one bites. You've got to be kidding me. Do we not have a decent drill bit around here? Finally! I thought that was aluminum, but maybe it's like armored plate or something. Jeez, that was ridiculous. I gotta drill a hole in the back of the tractor. Well, what the? Is that supposed to go in there? I have to pop this back off. 
thought that would just slide right through that, but it's kind of looking like you have to thread it in. That's weird. It's got a flat spot on it right here. So it's got to be mounted like that. Well, that's not what I wanted. Duh, I just had to plug upside down. Brain fart. Okay, let's put it back together. Bolt on. We'll get this started so it doesn't fly apart. So there's that. Sweet. Now I fully intended on putting two bolts in that, but I was not expecting that to drill that hard and I just don't want to deal with it again. So it's pretty sturdy. I might add a bolt later. We'll see. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is swap this fitting out. If it's right. Hopefully it's right. That's tight. I might have to get a wrench and go back there. There we go. So I don't know if oil will leak out of this or not. But I guess we'll find out. So I should have this ready in case it does. Oh yeah, she's leaking. Stick that in there for now. That'll at least slow it down anyway. I was wanting to keep this pipe here. I don't know if this comes apart. I'll go see. Okay, so my camera just died. Uh, I got this fitting swapped out. The old one was stuck in this little pipe hex deal. So I had to take that out, put it in the vise to break that other one loose, and then pull this one back out of there, put that one in, and then swap the end, if you can follow that. So here's the old one. I don't know what I'll do with that. That's just a regular Pioneer fitting. I guess this flat face lets more oil flow through faster or more volume or whatever. So you got to run that on the return for those blower motors. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything's done back here. I still got to tidy up these wires, tidy up the wires in the cab. And like I said, I got to call Ag Express figure out what I'm doing for a resume switch. Didn't quite get to the plow. I figured I'd let that sit because it wasn't really in my way. And I wanted to try and get most of this done before noon so I can go home and check on the baby. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm really hoping that we can start pumping some videos out for spring. We're getting some nice weather. Uh, it's supposed to be really nice the rest of this week. We'll try and do a little bit at a time, get things ready. Before we know it, we'll be in the field, so. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We got this 8400 set up to run the air seeder and uh, I think it'll work pretty good. So if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.